All right. So today we're going to talk with Zanetta, right? Is that how you say it? Yes. Okay. Just making sure. Um, she's 26 and um, we're going to talk about her experience in um, the dating field for a lesbian. Um, I'm as anybody who is kind of up on anything that's related to like trans stuff and lesbians and dating and spaces, you know that um, lesbians have had a hard time basically drawing boundaries around who we want to date and who we don't want to date because it's transphobic. So we're going to talk to Zanetta and see what her experience has been. Thanks for joining me. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. No problem. Okay. So where do you want to start? Um, I guess I started dating as a lesbian at about 22, shortly before the pandemic started. Um, and I wasn't like, I didn't believe in the trans stuff at the time, but I also wasn't being outward about anything, especially not on the dating apps. And so my first date off a dating app, I was thinking, oh, it's going to be with a woman. I don't need to have all of these safety measures. I don't need to try to keep myself safe in the ways I would if I were going on a date with a guy. Um, and so I go downstairs and I get in this stranger's car. And the moment I look over, I realize that's a man. Oh, and like the door is already closed. That's a man that looks somewhat like the woman I thought I was talking to. And so I was, <laughs> I was I terrified. Know, had you seen pictures of him? Yes. But later on the date, because I stayed, because I was terrified. Uh, he mentioned photoshopping his photos intentionally to get cis lesbians to go on a date with him. Wow. Oh my God. <laughs> That's, I, I've been in somewhat of a similar situation where I was set up on a blind date with a dude, got in the car by my mother, got in the car only to realize this dude's not right. And now I'm fucking stuck. And how are you going to play this? Right. Yeah. It's terrifying. So go ahead. Sorry. Uh, I just went through with the rest of the day and he was incredibly rude too. Uh, like he insulted the area I lived in within like the first minute of being in the car. Uh, and he said that I like should have worn something sexier. Which is just so gross. Wow. Uh, but it went by without anything worse than the date randomly being a man and um yeah but I've told that story multiple times to people in the TEQ plus community and I told it in two different ways that a man uh tricked me onto a date with him by photoshopping his photos and that a trans woman admitted to photoshopping her photos to get cis lesbians to go on dates with her and the difference in reaction between the two stories definitely pushed me further down the uh, gender critical pipeline. Really? So if you if you say it was just a man who tricked you, that's bad. But if it's a trans woman, a man who tricked, that's OK. Yeah. Just just, just changing the title made it OK. Yep. Interesting. So what has your experience been on the the dating apps? Since then, and since I started being outwardly gender critical, I've been kicked off of multiple apps. Uh, first, I got kicked off of Tinder for putting that I was, um, I think I put female only. And then I wrote them a strongly worded email outlining how that was homophobic to kick me off for saying that. And then they put me back on. Um, I can't remember all the apps I've been kicked off of, but generally the experience is not great. It's Almost every profile is a man pretending to be a woman or a woman that doesn't identify as a woman or a couple. Oh, yeah. The, mm. There's not really much purpose to even being on them. Now, uh, weren't you on her for a while? Wasn't that a whole Yeah, yeah. I think thing? I still am, actually. Oh, or you still are? I, I'm not 100% sure if I got kicked off that one or not. Because I know her used to be pretty specific for women you know and then they they release the whole uh you know 
thing like their whole policy basically saying oh we we don't discriminate against anybody and everybody's welcome and then at that point you're like well then it's not lesbian like it's not for women (laughs) her has even had i don't remember the exact wording but they've had like kind of pop-up announcements on the app about like turfism and like there's this specific category to report people for being turfs oh my god on what supposed what started as a lesbian dating app so what has your experience been in the just in the community in general around this like how how do you navigate you know these because it's it's right because you said it's it's either men or it's women who aren't aren't identifying as women right and so you and you don't want to really be I would assume you don't want to be involved with a woman who's not going to just be cool with herself right yeah I pretty much got ousted from the community when I like a couple years ago I the first thing I talked about was just that I'm homosexual and that trans women are women but I'm homosexual and that means female for females only and that was enough to have people um saying like I think you I believe you can do better wow I'm so disappointed in you you need to unlearn your biases uh turfs get the wall reference to the handmaid's tale just all kinds of awful shit and people really like just automatically ending any friendship even though I had tried to cultivate like um being a part of the mutual aid community um and now honestly I have a lot of anxiety like talking to people that are LGBTQIA plus without me having some way to know whether or not or what they think of the trans stuff like it's happened at concerts where people ask me for my number because we have a conversation before the show starts or I go to a gay square dancing class and someone asked me if I'd want to hang out after class and I don't even know what to do because it's like I like the person on the base like on face value but they might suddenly think I'm a Nazi. And you're talking about women here, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know what I found really, uh, I, I, it's bad enough that men are coming into lesbian dating apps and letting lesbian spaces and, you know, all that kind of stuff and being allowed to. But the thing that I, that I've felt has been really harmful and just hurtful is the fact that so many lesbians themselves and women themselves have turned on other women who aren't participating or aren't willing to participate in it to the fact that it's like you know it's it's super culty you know it's just really bizarre the way that they'll you know there's just no tolerance for any kind of difference of opinion at all um so yeah i feel your anxiety like i i have wanted to you know try to read like kind of get into my own local community but then I'm like oh my god I gotta deal with all that shit and just by going online and looking at things I know it's really super inclusive and like trans identified folks have just pretty much taken over everything here and I don't live in a big city you know I live in more of a I would actually say a little bit more of a conservative area of California so I can't, I can only imagine what it's like in like, you know, Seattle or Portland or one of the bigger cities. Yeah. I will say that um, someone tr- or a group of teenagers tried to get me kicked out of the gay square dancing class. I was never approached about it, but I was able to ascertain that that's what was going on because they were all fine with me. They liked me even. And then uh, we got an email before class saying, People that come here have different opinions, but when you're in the space, just remember to respect pronouns and chosen names, blah, blah, blah. And so I just had like the, oh shit. Yeah. Someone found like me online and I get there and all of the teenagers were wearing shirts that said trans women are women, protect trans women, just like homemade rushed shirts. And they would like, uh, you have to like touch hands in square dancing and they were like hover handing it with just me. And then we went out on the porch with the man running it um, during break and they kind of fought with him and then they came back inside and they were discussing just like never coming back. Good. So I figured out like they were trying to get me kicked out, but the dude, I'm pretty sure he's just a classic gay guy that <laughs> doesn't believe in it, but 
runs an event that he has to be inclusive at. Yeah. That that's oh my god, that's that's just so weird. Um so how did it so you you have an you have somewhat of an online presence. So where do you think they like found you? Online? Uh at the like, moment like... I was on TikTok and they're teenagers, so I'm gonna say oh, TikTok. okay. Okay. Because I had a video that had like forty thousand views on it the weekend before. Oh, when what was that video about, if you don't mind saying? I don't remember. It's been a while since oh, okay. I talked. <laughs> But it was something super turfy. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that was all I was posting about. Okay. Um. And what now? What has your experience been with trying to find lesbian-only spaces, or events, or things like that? I think I'm pretty lucky because I'm clued into a local women's land, and it's not lesbian-only. But the events tend to be like almost all lesbians and maybe one or two bi or straight women, mostly like a couple bi women sometimes. Um, and there's like a regional lesbian group that's actually lesbian only. And so they did a whole camp event that I went to. And, um, other than that, I'm just in a lot of like online lesbian groups, but generally my life revolves around lesbians. Like almost all of my friends are lesbians. Almost all of the events I go to are mostly lesbians and I, I feel like as far as it goes in this day and age, I've gotten pretty lucky with that. Yeah. But how did you, how did you have to go about finding these places though? And spaces? Uh, I mean, I not was, details, but it, basically what I'm getting at is it's kind of like underground, right? Like you have yeah. to like, it's just nothing you can advertise. So I was searching on Google and Facebook turf, insert my city. <laughs> and them, insert my city and I was finding women that were being called out for being turfs in my area and messaging them and then um I found one woman saying like if you're a turf in blank message me and so I messaged her and she invited me to a protest and from there like I got connected to women that um ran like a local radfem group and they were connected to the women's land so from there it really just blossomed out and then like lesbians in this state no lesbians in all the other states to go to the they shared all the same events and email groups and everything so that's so cool I you know what I need to try to do that <laughs> I've not even thought about doing that just go right to the source just figure you know figure out who's who's getting called out for being a horrible turf and you know reach out to them right I still do uh, search that sometimes and I found a woman recently who was getting called out for being a turf in my area and I just messaged her and I was like I saw that you were being called a turf. If you want a community of like-minded women, let me know. That's cool. Um, have you had any um, any other experiences in person with with dudes saying they're women? Oh, I mean, it's just I been them. like I see them all the time. And I, when I was trying to be straight, I had dated someone that turned autogynephilic, so that was a whole thing. But with the area I live, I'm like, it's constant everywhere I go. Are you willing to talk about your experience with the AGP? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> because that's, you know, that's, um, I think so much of it is getting rolled over into just, you know, uh, getting rid of the whole thing around AGP, which is that they, that's a, it's a it's a paraphilia like it's a, it's a disorder it's not it's not anything healthy or cool for these dudes to be engaging in not for the women and kids around them and not for them i mean i'm not without some sympathy <laughs> that's like these dudes are not okay they need help they don't need to be encouraged so you know if you want to just kind of talk a little bit about like what you saw and what you experienced with dealing with you know being in kind of like a i guess relationship with this guy It'd be interesting from your perspective. That would be why I never really believed in any of the trans stuff. Like I did doubt myself, um, question if I was like the homophobic people that could just never get it because they were a different generation. Um, but when I was 19, I just wanted to be normal. I just wanted to be straight. I just wanted to have a normal life. So I started dating this guy. Um, and it like we moved in within a month because I was living in a bad place and uh, he, and then I became disabled pretty quickly after that. And we had to move in with his sister who identified as trans and her wife who identified as trans. And at about the same time, I was starting to talk about 
I'm pretty sure I'm lesbian. Uh, like I'm trying to figure this out, but I'm pretty sure I'm lesbian. And then he started identifying as trans like really quickly with after that. And so then I was kind of just stuck in that household and he kind of did the whole Buffalo Bill thing too. So that was like my whole uh, introduction to trans. So do you think he started doing it because he was trying to keep the relationship? I or did he just he go down the starting... rabbit hole with everybody else? I think trans? that he found out about stuff through his sister and then that me talking about thinking I was lesbian pushed him not in the way of trying to keep the relationship but in the way of like paraphilia because Mm. like I was lesbian and he had like this pornographic fantasy of being a lesbian had he had that before or did he just come out with it after you were? I don't know about the timing on it. Yeah. I just know when he came out with it. And but so how- he'd ahead. always like, he had definitely always been a weird, like a dark inside person. <laughs> I don't really know a better way to phrase that. So what was some, like, how long were you in a relationship with him when he was identifying for like identifying like a year and a half because I just wasn't able I didn't have income I uh, couldn't get housing I my mom wouldn't let me move back in with her and so I was just like kind of stuck and did he did he start to medically transition or was he was he wearing the clothes yeah he took um he started taking HRT and he uh, so at the beginning, like he slowly nagged me, if you know what nagging is, into changing my per- my whole like appearance. So like oh. insults, small little insults to get me to change my appearance. And then that's, so I think it, there was like a degree of his AGP from the beginning. And then that's what he started dressing as once he transitioned. So it sounds like he wanted you to be the man. He wanted, he wanted me to be the woman that he wanted to be. Like he, oh, he taught me to dress as the woman he wanted to be. Oh, okay. So he was wanting you to like maybe fem it up more, like be more. Yeah. Okay. That's weird. That's why I call that Buffalo billing. It. <laughs> oh, okay. Because he wants to, he wants to have and consume that <laughs> from somebody else. Like a vampire. <laughs> so when you so you got out of that relationship and then so so you learned really quick about kind of like the dudes are which the dudes aren't right which makes it even scarier than when you get in this car later on and yeah, you're like oh <laughs> um yeah and before my introduction to it all with that guy I like my school was still really really homophobic we had the gay straight alliance but not once in four years did someone mention the word trans and I graduated in 2015 Wow! Um, so all I knew about trans um, was from orange is the new black and then one show with a girl that was a lesbian and they just made it so clear that they were transitioning because they're gay so it didn't really process in my brain as like being a real thing Oh, interesting. So then the AGP was my very first, like, real introduction to it all. Well, how did you feel about, like, his sister and and stuff like that? Like, what was your take on that situation? That they were lesbians trying to be men. And it was just, you were just like, did you, were you thinking why? Were you, like, processing why they were doing that? I didn't really think about it a lot, no. (laughs) Like, because I had only seen um, trans men once or twice before that in the tv show and it was always lesbians trying to be like not lesbian yeah so you you never got into the trans thing you never really believed it you just kind of but you did try to go along for a while um there was a lot of a lot of fights uh in that household surrounding me being transphobic and just not getting it (laughs) what were some of the things that were super transphobic um it's hard to remember exact details but I remember one thing was like he would like get yelling he would start yelling and then I would kind of like 
like kind of like do that like shell type thing and he would just start saying that I was doing that because he had or because I was interpreting his voice as a man's voice and I interpret men's voices as like aggressive and I'd say well you do have a male voice and yeah and And then yeah and I talk about like well you have to be male to be trans and just all this other stuff and I'd talk about kind of gender critical or rad femme type opinions about how gender is just a collection of stereotypes based on sex and ideally we would do away with it all and they told me that made me a gender <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I love the twisting the twisting is so crazy the gymnastics that that goes on you know um I think that's what makes it so hard to tackle this and like talk about it because the goalposts constantly move everything's in flux all the time everything changes depending on who the person is like if like my opinion is totally valid and this other person could have a completely different one and that they're totally valid too so like nobody's talking the same language i think what made it hardest for me to step out of was them tying it to racism like if you don't think trans women are women then you're racist because black women get referenced as masculine or man-like as if that makes sense but when you're in like a very intensely gaslighting situation you kind of lose your ability to think through those crazier ones like that oh absolutely I was there I know I remember (laughs) I also remember the little tiny like seeds of truth my wife would drop around and she wouldn't push it she would just be like some people say drop and then I would be like you know thinking a little bit and you have to kind of break down that that wall of like not willing to just kind of logic through this because if you actually logic through it it makes no goddamn sense yeah especially the racism one my gosh because it's so racist yeah it's it's i mean that goes that goes into what people nicely call woke culture which is just it it makes it makes no real sense to attach these things that don't belong together you know um i don't know as a as a as some as a woman who's been like a voting democrat for years i'm just totally disappointed and disgusted by the whole situation you know i'm just like what like the whole the whole point was and this i think that you know this goes back to like lesbian spaces the whole point was was um as i believed it uh progressive being progressive or liberal whatever was about understanding different class systems different individuals and people and minorities and stuff like that and believing everybody should participate in the you know the community right no one should be told they can't be there or they can't vote or they can't you know be go to school or whatever like that but you also respected individual groups needs right so you wouldn't go put yourself in a group you didn't belong because they needed their own space because their own personal experiences are different than yours and it's like this new stuff has just completely obliterated any of that. Lesbians, meaning women, females, who are sexually attracted exclusively to other women, females, have a unique experience in life. And no one's respecting that. And no one's respecting like lots of other people's experiences too. They even took over the Black Lives Matter where I live, like leading it with Trans Lives Matter. Do you know, I that started like way early too. And I remember when I was still trans identified and trying to like be cool with how crazy I saw these people being. Um, I was in one of the pride parades and I remember they were, this was when the Black Lives Matter thing just started very, very early on. And I remember the the woman, a trans identified woman who had the little blow horn thing because she loved that thing. She wanted to shout at everybody all the time. Um, she started seeing uh trans lives matter and that was the first time i heard about it and i was already walking in the parade behind her and i was like oh my fucking god i want out like no like my my old progressive soul was like that's no that's um what is that called appropriation you're appropriating (laughs) that's crazy did you ever read um the bbc article that was done about lesbian spaces and, and lesbians being pressured to date trans women? Yes, I did. It's been a while since that came out. Uh, it was like 2000, 
uh, 2021, I think it came out. What I remember most about that was the open letter and count, like countering that article. What was that? What was that about? I don't know. We didn't see that. So it was, um, I think they got like upwards of 16,000 signatures just calling for the BBC to basically condemn that article about like the 80 lesbians and just like 16,000 people, including some comedians and artists that I like. Oh God. And yeah. so as someone who has dealt with um, those men in that capacity, like that was like a, like a knife to the gut, like a letter of 16,000 people saying those women are lying. That didn't happen. This doesn't happen. And, and you're sitting here going, no, it absolutely does. Yeah. I have personal experience with it. Have, did, when you were on the dating apps, did you ever get any shit from other women? Um, I don't think so, actually. Uh, generally, I was very, like, I would go on apps where you have to match to talk. Uh, they can't just message you. And... I was just very liberal with my left swipes. So I didn't really match with many people that would get upset about it. Um, but how did you make that judgment? What was that? How did you make that judgment? Um, so any pronouns other than she, her, like, cause some apps force you to put some pronouns. So any pronouns other than she, her uh, as an automatic swipe left. And then like also, a lot of the other things that are just kind of like my personal preferences, like um, I'm more into butch women. So if they have she, her pronouns, they're less likely to be uh, like into the trans stuff. Especially so, if they're butch, right? Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, and then too many filters was always an automatic swipe left after the whole uh, Photoshop experience. So I think that like helped a lot. <laughs> how did you approach did you go out after your 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 um experience with this dude how did you approach going out did you go out again uh yeah on a date with some with but some only friends? i would have like pick a place that was somewhere nearish to my house and i would meet them there and plan for it to be a short date like with an easy getaway and oh so i was just God. more cautious yeah. about it <laughs> yeah public public space right yeah. Um, I interrupted you a little earlier. Were you going to say something else? Oh, yeah. Um, so I did have a woman after I started being like publicly called out for being a turf. Uh, I had a woman that I had talked to five, maybe five messages on Tinder a year prior. She went back to the app, found me and messaged me and said, I saw Instagram posts about you. And I just want you to know I agree with you if you know what I mean. Like she was too <laughs> afraid to even say it straight oh up. Oh my god! In a private message. Yeah. She was scared to even say in a private message. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I guess she never said any like specific context, but there's nothing else it could have been about. <laughs> right? You're like, yeah. So what would you? I, so I'm curious. You're 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 not on apps anymore. You're just like, no, uh, I think I'm on Facebook dating. I can't remember if I have any other ones downloaded, but I don't really open them very often. Um, how do you, what do you think your, what kind of advice would you give to lesbians that are dating, especially young, newly out ones? Cause like it would be, it would be a total, I think it's a totally different situation for someone who's maybe like my age, like say I was going to start dating for some reason got divorced and I was gonna start dating I'm in I think a much better position to like navigate this shit than a, a fucking 20 year old who's just come out uh I'd say try to find rad femme communities always because the second you find one like if you find your way into one it's gonna just like completely blossom um and if you can't travel to go to any events and you must do like app dating, look around at the different apps because some apps have better ratios of real women in different areas. Uh, like Facebook dating in my area is mostly real women with she, her pronouns. Oh, interesting. Um, and just 
be cautious treat it like you would trying to go on a date with a man don't let your guards down because you might end up on a date with a man and I don't know good luck (laughs) (laughs) you know you're not the first woman to say um fight find a rad femme group and I find that very interesting um what if the what if the woman doesn't consider herself radical feminist or a feminist at all but I, but is but is critical of this like he doesn't believe in it doesn't want any part of it i don't think everyone in like the social rad femme groups i'm in consider themselves rad femme like actually radically feminist some of them are political activist groups but there's different types of groups so don't count out anything labeled rad femme that's what kind of been my experience too. Like, especially like the lesbian groups, they tend to be just more focused on lesbians, not necessarily your political or philosophical beliefs. A lot of the times, it's just like a more polite way of saying tr- turf. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's- oh, so how do you feel? Okay, this is I. This is the one. Anytime I get in these kind of discussions there's always somebody who's gonna say no one's telling you you have to date a trans woman no one's telling you you have to date a man how would you how do you respond to that or how would you respond to that no one's telling you i mean some people are telling you you have to so it's just a straight up lie to say that but generally yeah people aren't telling you you have to they're just telling you you can't say that you won't so it's just a new rendition of don't ask don't tell that was that was my take as well yeah, it, it's it's kind of been that thing where it's like, and, and lesbians that play along with this that won't date a, a dude that's trans identified, um, they'll they'll and but they'll push other lesbians. They'll do the same shit. They'll do the same shit. They'll pretend that they're open to it, but they'll find reasons to get out of it. You know, and it's like, oh my god, as as a woman who did date men very early in my coming out or my when am I like about 18 to 20 before I came out as lesbian, you know, I remember having to like do all that fucking labor to like get out of shit with men and like avoid this and avoid that. And it's like, you know, save their feelings, especially if you're alone with them and they seem like they're aggressive. Why do we have to do this now again? Like that, that's my feeling about it. I'm like, Oh my fucking God. Now I have to negotiate men again. And it used to be that everyone knew the guy saying, Oh, well, I'm a lesbian is creepy. And yeah. now everyone's just pretending that they like didn't know that already. And this is my take, and I'm curious what your take is. All the men who claim to be lesbian are AGP. A hundred percent. Because they're Absolutely. heterosexual, right? Why if they yeah. if they were gay dudes who were trans, they wouldn't even be anywhere near lesbian spaces. I have never met a um trans being that was not an autogynophile. And that is, that is, I think, even the worst part of this is we are getting the sickest and creepiest dudes. You know, this isn't, this isn't the, um, I, what most people think a trans woman is, I think the most average like person who's just not involved is thinks like a trans woman is a super effeminate gay man who transitioned fully. And they're like, well, he, you know, he, she's okay. She can use the bathroom, which is, you know, and it's like, that is not the majority of what's happening here. And this is definitely not what lesbians are come in contact with. It used to mostly be like just a few gay men with extreme dysphoria and honestly, if it, I wish it was still that, because then I wouldn't have to fight anything. I wouldn't have to yeah. be like going against public opinion. But now it's mostly AGPs. Have you run across any? Have you had any um, interactions with other lesbians who don't want to call themselves lesbians and try to pressure you into playing along with that thing, not being called a she, not be called lesbian? Uh, yeah, when I was, before I started being publicly uh, turfy, when I was still going to this like local queer youth group thing, um, I was trying to come to terms with being lesbian. And this woman that worked there talked about how lesbian is an exclusionary label and it's old fashioned and kind of political and she doesn't like it. Um, and then I also found her on TikTok and she posted something about like how she was so closed minded when she was eight because she thought she'd always be cat for cat. Pussy for pussy. Oh, okay. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> she used little emojis. Okay. 
<laughs> okay. Because I was going to say, you know, if you go down this road far enough, you do come across the, the the other, that weird side of it where people think they're animals. And I'm just like, oh God, now she thinks she's an animal. No, okay. I get what you're saying. But yeah. There was quite a bit of that. And I, f- I feel like I have gotten pressured a lot to call myself they, them. And I still like people assume that I consider myself a they, them. And they'll like ask me multiple times <laughs> when they now, aren't do, asking other women. Why do you think that is? Just because you're like not super feminine? Because you're not. I know I'm not butch. Yeah. So like... I'm clearly a woman <laughs> and I'm not like uh, masculine at all, but I think it's just the short hair and I don't wear makeup and I wear like cargo pants. Like I just, I wear comfortable clothes so I can't be a woman. Jesus Christ. No, this isn't, this isn't regressive at all. <laughs> oh, okay. So I did want to ask you this. Um, what was your experience like um, for you, kind of your first time being in a, in a woman only space? Oh my God. It was, it was magical. <laughs> magical. Like, I had never been around more than maybe one or two other lesbians, especially lesbians identifying as lesbians before then Uh, but I just remember feeling so much safer and even though I was really anxious it it was just a different feeling of anxiety Mm -hmm. and the memory that always pops out in my brain was that we took uh, a truck and three lesbians in the front of the truck and seven lesbians sitting in the bed of the truck. And we like went down the mountain to the river. And then we went into the river and swam topless, like all the photos of lesbians in the seventies that I've seen. And yeah, that's one of my favorite memories. Cause it's just so it's, like, it's special to just be around only lesbians and it, it's women's land, but like yeah. I said, it's usually mostly lesbians. It's it's definitely a very unique experience to be around only only women, only females. You know, um, my first experience was rel- just a couple of years ago, and I think you were at the same thing I was at. Um, and granted, there were a few guys hanging around because they worked there, but like generally, it was just lesbians, women, and it was really cool it was just totally different vibe totally different feeling environment and it was the first time I think in my life that I actually felt not I felt completely um not concerned about my body or my weight or anything like that like I just felt comfortable and it was just really weird not thinking like oh what does my shirt look like right now is it hugging my body weird do I look like how do I look yeah I, and you know, the thing is, I didn't realize I did that at all, even now, like, you know, but it's really weird being around just women and women and not just women, though, but women that are kind of on the same page with, I guess, a life philosophy or belief about putting women first and about women being okay as they are, you know, that kind of grounding. And um, yeah, it was a really cool experience. And I hope to maybe go this coming year again, because I think it's, it's needed. Oh yeah. It's even this year or this last year, um, that thing you went to before, uh, they had it somewhere else and the staff was all women this year and the kitchen staff, there was even a couple of lesbians Very cool. and and they loved us. (laughs) Oh, that sounds good. Well, thanks for talking to me and sharing your experience. And, um, yeah, if there's any last thoughts you have, go right ahead. No, no. (laughs) No last thoughts. Okay.